Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending the Crisis Averted, the Economic Pandemic webinar with Brad Sugars. We will go ahead and begin now. Brad, the floor is all yours. Well, hey, everybody. Uh, let me just put on my webcam and uh, make sure you guys can say hi and see where we're going. So, uh, Welcome to uh, Las Vegas. This is my home office in Las Vegas, where I do a lot of my recordings from. And uh, let me start by saying one very simple thing. The World Health Organization just classified it as a pandemic. Now, I'm not here to talk about the actual virus. I'm not here to talk about the, the sickness, all of that sort of stuff. What we're here to talk about is the economic impact of all of this stuff. The economic impact is going to be large and getting larger. We've already seen much of the economic impact kicking in. We've already seen governments around the world starting to throw money at this thing and starting to give tax cuts and rebates. Uh, we've already seen uh, some governments uh, uh, cancel mortgage payments for the month. These are some of the things that are happening. Now, when it comes to a virus or a problem, now, we got to understand that we're not actually here to deal with the problem. We're not we're not looking at how do we actually have the, uh, the the virus stop. Today we are looking at this, but I'm going to say it to you very bluntly. Whatever you thought 2020 was going to be, the whatever you thought it was going to look like, however you felt you were going to perform in 2020, it's different now. All of the plans you had up until today are going to need to shift. They're gonna to need to change. They just are. There's no two ways about it. Economies are different. Supply chains are different. We're going to see different spending patterns from our customer bases all over the world. We're gonna see different buying needs from people. You've already seen the hoarding of uh, toilet paper, which I'm still at a loss as to the hoarding of toilet paper. But we're gonna to get to the 11 points today and I'm gonna take you through this because what I want to have happen is I want you to leave this webinar not thinking about, hey, how do I actually deal with this problem? I want you to come out of it with a plan. See, we've got to turn panic into plan. If we can turn panic into plan, then we have succeeded with what we need to do today. We need to make sure that we walk out of this knowing what we're going to do and knowing what we need to do. You see, when 2008 hit and the economic crisis came, which didn't come from a pandemic, it didn't come from a virus, it came from a mortgage virus, if that's what you want to call it. When 2008 hit, I started traveling the world and teaching people what to do in it, but it took too long. So this way, as you know, like a day and a half ago, I announced that I'm doing this webinar and in a day and a half, uh, we got 1500 clients from Action Coach from around the world jumping on a webinar with us. I'm probably going to need to do this multiple times over the next few weeks just to keep up with what's happening economically. These 11 steps are the things that I want you doing. So take notes, grab your notepad, grab your pen. Let's get to learning about what it is that needs to happen in order to do that. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. Let me just pull that up. Okie dokie. Show screen instead of camera. All right, so here's what's gonna happen. Come on, show screen button. All right, as the show screen kicks into gear for everybody, it's gonna take a little second here, obviously. It doesn't wanna jump straight in. All right, let me just keep chatting while it's working its way around. What I'm noticing, uh, first and foremost, if you study anything about the virus, what you're going to notice is where China is at right now. You're going to notice that uh, there's a bell curve of when it kicks in, when it grows, and when it starts to reduce. Um, Jared, I'm not sure if you're in the background there, but I cannot for some reason get this thing to show my screen. I'm not sure if you can fix that for me, um, but the show screen is deciding not to play ball at this point in time.
So as we study the, what's going on and we study what's, what we're seeing is we see a period of time of this thing going. I'll go back to my webcam while Jared fixes that for me somewhere in the background. Um, if we go to what's going on with uh, the, the whole bell curve of this stuff and um, the fire effect, if we start to see what's happening, it's going to take a period of time to work its way through each area that is going into. It's going to be probably a lot worse than most markets thought it was going to be. And it's probably going to not be as bad as Italy and not be as bad as those certain areas of China. But it is going to affect the mentality of the people that are in there. It's going to affect the brain. It's going to affect people's ideas as to what is and what isn't possible uh, economically. So you and I need to prepare for the economic side of this more than we need to prepare for the viral side of this, if that makes sense. I'm not here to talk viral. Hey, Jared, how you doing? Have you got this sorted for me in the background? It's a global office. That's Brad. Well, Brad, we... All right, I got it. I got it working here. I got it working. Okay, yeah, that's it. Can't do it on this end. We have to do it on your end. Okay, thank you very much. Whenever you clicked, it made it work. So thanks for that. Um, webcam off, screen on. Let's go yeah, that way. I had to re-log in so I could get full. Thank you, Eve. Thank you, Jared. Okay. So here's here's what we're looking at. In fact, while we're doing this, let me just throw a poll up for you, gang. Um, I just want to see what you're noticing in your marketplace. Okay. So here's the poll that's coming up. Are you noticing the market going up, down, or in between? What are you seeing with the way you're doing it, okay? So take a look at that. Let's get going. Um, screen share. So I want to take a look at what it is that we are doing here today, okay? There's the poll up for you. So take a look at that one, and let's see what we can come up with, gang. Um, I'm going to see what it is that's happening for different people. So is this a crisis? Um, look, I'm not here to discuss whether it's a crisis from a uh, medical viewpoint. The World Health Organization has called it a pandemic, so I guess they know more about this stuff than you and I do. Is it a crisis economically? That we're not certain of just yet. That is going to take another week, maybe two weeks. My guess, my best guess is yes. My best guess is that there's going to be an economic downturn that is greater than we've seen uh, for a long time. It won't rival 2008, but it will be an economic downturn. It'll be shorter than the downturn of economics of 2008, in my opinion. But here we are, we're looking at this economic downturn and we're saying, okay, what do we got to do from it? So, as you complete that poll, if I can have the last, I've got about 80% of people completed the poll. If I can get the last 20% of people to complete that, and then I can share the results with everybody. Um, as we get into understanding this, the first thing I want to tell you that you've got to do, step one of, of this whole thing. So we close that poll off. Let's take a look at the results. Um, results here. What are they? Uh, 9% saying it's up. You're all selling toilet paper and uh, or serve pro in cleaning products and that sort of thing. I know my cleaning company, we're going to go way up from this one. 42% are down and 49% are about the same. Excellent. So that's that's where we're sitting at this point in time. All right. Now, uh, number one thing, communicate. Now, what is that for? Okay. Communication in this particular case, what we're thinking about is this. When crisis happens, people go to worry. When worry happens, people go negative. The results end up negative. So first of all, your team, how are you communicating to your people? How are you communicating to the employees in your organization about what's going on in the company? Now, good, bad, or indifferent, you need to communicate with them daily, not weekly, not monthly, but daily. You need to be on that communication trail. Here's what we're doing. Here's what's changing. Here's what we're up to. Here's the next thing. If you need to communicate through video, through technology, do that with your team. But make sure you're communicating with your team on a daily basis as you go through. Customer base, again, you're going to have to communicate with them. You've seen examples of this. So the best one was uh, United Airlines was probably the first one to come out with a great uh, uh, pr proposal telling people about their new policies that you can switch aircraft, you can switch airlines, there's no penalties, you can uh, delay your flights. You know, you've got to communicate with your customers what you're doing, how you're now cleaning more, how you're doing this, what you're added, what you're doing. But communicate with your customers and communicate immediately. 
networks, suppliers, stakeholders. When I say networks, I mean all of your social media. You got to be communicating through your social. You got to be communicating with the, the people you do business with on a daily basis, any networking group. What are you doing because of this thing? You, in a crisis, you can't over communicate, okay? You've got to keep that communication and that relationship growing. And then finally, the community. Press releases at this point in time are still important. Press releases are still going to be something where you get a message out to the marketplace and you let people know what is going on. So sit down tonight or today and start working out what are, who do I need to communicate with around this stuff? What do I need to do? Sitting in the dark doesn't help in crisis scenarios, okay? Now, we're not in crisis yet. But if we don't start communicating, we could end up in crisis with uh, where we're at. So make sure your communication kicks in and gets started. Second thing I'm going to say, listen, and it's interesting. I, I chose a quote here from uh, John F. Kennedy that happened to use the Chinese. And it's kind of like a, a double edged sword, I guess, is, is the way this one reads. But understand this, in every massive change, there is opportunity. Every time there is massive shifts and changes, there's opportunity. And you need to be looking for the opportunities right now. You need to be looking for where are the chances for me to do better? Where are the chances for, you know, what can I do to add to my business at this point in time? When 2008 hit, I saw some companies where they thought, oh, the world is ending. And of course, what happened for them? The world ended. You know, when they started looking for success and started looking for new ways and started thinking about where can I go to make better better results? Where can I do this? It changed dramatically, okay? So make sure that you are one of those people that do that. You know, the, the whole theory, and, and I sat down with my team the other day and said, okay, what do we sell that's like toilet paper? And if you don't, then maybe we've got to do it. Now, the, the fourth point on here is sometimes you got to turn off the news. Sometimes you got to just get off the news and, and – uh, uh, get yourself going and focus on the good things, focus on the wins, focus on the success stuff. You got to lead your people through this. You need to be the most positive one in your team. That's an absolute fundamental. The more I read about this whole virus thing, the virus is not going to be the main problem. The main problem is going to be the economic impact of it. So you've got to be looking at this and saying, how do we win through this economic impact? Because there'll be other people in your industry who actually don't see it as a positive and start to lose. You, if you can possibly turn this into a positive, you will. So keep looking for that. Stay focused on what, what can be done. Don't worry about what can't be done. If I be, if I'm just throwing my webcam on here just for a second, I want you to understand something that negativity is going to be around you all day, every day with this thing. There's going to be negativity time and time and time again. What I'm thinking of is this, is how do we spin that? How do we make sure that we are the most positive person in the room? How do you make sure that you are the most positive person in the room? People are not looking for more negativity right now. They're looking and gravitating to the people who are positive about what's going on. So be that positive person for your customers, for your staff, for your family. Be that person that, that can do that, okay? So on to point number three out of our 11 points. And by the way, if you, we will have time at the end of this for questions. So if you do have any questions, type them into the question box. Um, number three, there are the cycles of the economy are relatively the same, okay? They happen time and time again. And it's usually a seven to 10 year cycle. Now, interestingly enough, if we take a look at this cyclic effect, and where we're at right now, we've had such a massive economic boom, such a massive summer caused by many things. But, you know, the Trump effect being one of them. Obviously, the UK has struggled through the Brexit and was coming through the end of that and starting to think, wow, look at this looking up. And then all of a sudden this kicks in, you know, Australia, Canada, you've had the right of, of the, the um, resources and stuff. But each market has been slightly different. Now, here's the thing. At the end of an economic summer, we get fall. Now, the stock markets have just done pretty solid falls. And, you know, if I, I, I let me just pull up Bloomberg on my phone right now and, and just see where we're at from today, because I haven't even had a chance to check it today. I've been getting ready for this webinar and making it, uh, uh, looking at it. Yeah, see, there's no stimulus package announced yet. And all of a sudden, when the stimulus package gets announced, we'll bounce back up again. But I'm still thinking probably dead cat at this point. That's the bounce. So we're in fall. Now, that means that there's still real estate cycle to go because the money's going to be pulled out and put somewhere, you know, but these are the things. 
Now, will this fall last long? It depends on the virus. So we've got to look at it. I'm going to get to what to do in just a moment, but it's we've got to understand this downturn because of, you know, simple things. China makes all of the drugs, not all of the drugs, but a vast majority of the drugs are made in China for people's health and stuff. That's going to have an impact three, six, nine months from now. Um, you know, is Apple going to be able to get its iPhones in three, six, nine months? All of these questions of supply chain, if, if it was just a supply chain problem, if this stuff had only been a, a, a Chinese problem and it was just a supply chain, that in and of itself would have a massive economic impact on the world. But the fact that it's now, you know, moving across the world, that's going to have an impact. The winter is going to be shorter than it was from 2008. And we'll get back to spring pretty dang quick, in my opinion. OK, again, this depends on the length and the severity of, of this disease. Now, I, I'm looking at it from a point of view of, of all of the things I'm reading are saying 30 to 90 days, a market moves through this. The next two weeks, I want you to watch how China goes. Now, I'm, in my opinion, now, again, the, the, the information out of China is not always 100 uh, percent perfect. Let's let's be blunt about that. What I'm seeing out of China, though, is that they're coming to the end of the curve. At the, at the peak, they were recording around 4,000 new uh, episodes of the disease every day. Now it's down to about 200. If, that, if you can believe that, then China's gone through the worst and is coming out the other end. Italy's going to be the next one we have to watch to see how it goes there, obviously. Japan's come through. Germany's been doing a phenomenal job of track and trace. You know, so there's a lot of things going on that's doing a very good job. The cancellation of big events. Um, you know, if you're in the big event business, you're going to get cancellations. You're going to have to look at how do I do something different? We'll get more into that in just a moment. So <clears throat> as we come back into the spring cycle, which I'm not thinking much more than a year away. So I'm, I'm thinking less than a year to get back to that cycle. It could be as little as 90 days to get back into spring and to get the economies booming again. You got to remember the U.S. is having an election. These uh, electioneers are going to want this thing booming before this election. Come November, Donald Trump's going to want to see an economy booming. So there's going to have to be uh, some form of uh, uh, economic relief. And we, he, he thought, you know, it's going to come out yesterday. And the markets obviously reacted yesterday by bouncing back up and then went back down again today because it hasn't been released yet. So we'll wait and see when that gets released, what the markets start to do. But China turning the corner will be a big part of uh, what we see on the economic cycles and how fast we move through these cycles. You know, listen, I am more confident about this being going better than I am uh, about it being pessimistic. I'm talking to you about this virus from a point of view of uh, next week, I'm jumping on a plane to go to London. Today, I'm going to basketball games. I'm not seeing this as something that you know, we shut down the whole of life. I know that there's going to be shutdowns. I know there's going to be times of things, but you just got to look at the economic impact of the cruise ship industry alone, just the cruise ship industry. I know clients of mine across the world, there's some in the UK, they, they book all of the acts for cruise ship industry. These businesses are going to get belted. They're going to get hit hard and they're going to have to be looking to do something different. They're going to have to switch. They're going to have to pivot real fast. And maybe that's you. You're going to have to pivot real fast on what you're doing. You know, I know for us at Action Coach, we've got more businesses coming to us now than ever before because they're in panic mode. And they're like, I don't know what to do. Well, come see us at Action Coach. The basics of business are still vital today. Learning those basics, knowing those basics is still vital today. And working with a coach is still the most important thing you can do to be focused on what we need to do. Your 90-day plan of the crisis is going to be based on this webinar today as to what we need to do. So let's move through to point four where we start to turn this thing around and see what we can actually do. So step number four, we have to understand change, okay? We have to know that you, you can't wait. You can't wait for this thing to, to, to beat up on you and then shift. You can't wait for it. You got to get ahead. You got to be the first. You got to be taking that action right now. So think that through and don't just be waiting. My formula for change, if you haven't ever learned that with me before, is dissatisfaction times vision plus first steps has to be greater than resistance. You know, if you wait until your dissatisfaction is high from this thing, you, you, it's too late. I saw too many people in 2008 wait. They waited and waited and waited thinking, oh, it'll blow over. Oh, it'll blow over. Oh, it'll blow over. Listen, 
you know, the, there's the people with climate change who say, listen, if climate change is really a hoax and hey, we stop polluting the environment, then all we've done is we've done a great job of not polluting the environment. OK, that's that's a simple point. In this case, if you make the shift to a leaner, faster, better business and the thing blows over in 90 days, then great. You're still a leaner, faster, better business 90 days from now. OK, the worst that can happen is you get leaner, faster and better and you make those changes that need to be made. So you got to look at every aspect of the business right now and start making it. Are you going to need to work harder in the next few days? Yes, you're going to be putting in long hours the next few days. Not long hours doing, but long hours thinking. Long hours thinking about what product needs to shift. How do I need to shift it? What services, pricing, delivery? How am I going to do all this stuff? We're going to get to more detail on this as we get through the webinar, but I want you to understand this is not something where you can wait to make a shift. You've got to make the shift and you've got to make it now. Some of you are going to need to shift the whole dang business. Some of you, your business is gone for the next 90 days. The actual industry you are in is different. I remember um, when I was in uh, the, the motorhome and RV business back in 2008 hit. And first we had massive oil prices, which led to massive gas prices. Then we had a massive uh, uh, credit crunch. The credit was gone. Boom, I had to change business. We went from selling motorhomes to renting motorhomes. We had to shift the business immediately because we just did. There was no other way around it. And if we didn't shift immediately, we would have gone under. You've got to be thinking about that. What is the change that you're going to need to make? And if I can put it to you bluntly, when people say things to me, like if it ain't broke, don't fix it type thing, right now you're gonna need to break stuff, okay? You are gonna need to be the one breaking things in your business. So make sure that you are stepping it up and getting to exactly what you need to do. Get that change happening. Now, this next one, I'm gonna put something on here. Number five is to cut back. When fall happens, you cut back the trees. When fall happens, you plow under the field. When fall happens, you got to cut back. Don't wait. Don't hold on. Don't sit there and say, okay, I don't need to cut back yet. It's time. Think about this just for a second, okay? If the crisis is as big as it, as, as big as I believe it's going to be economically, if this crisis is the economic crisis that we're going to see, not the, the viral crisis, not the, the health crisis, the economic challenge that's coming, because the governments are going to have to throw money at this to turn this around fast. If we don't see that level of government intervention, then we're going to see changes that are going to be the thing. Cash right now is going to be king. If you can stop spending on certain things, I would stop spending on certain things. Now, that doesn't mean you stop on marketing and sales and growing the business stuff. It doesn't mean you stop on things that are going to help you grow. It means you just look at things that are unnecessary. If you're going to upgrade something today and it doesn't really need upgrading today, hold off just for a little bit. It might only be 90 days. It might only be 30 days. But it, in, if we can just make certain that we survive this thing, Right now, it's like survivor. It's like, let's not get voted off the island type thing. Let's make sure our business is here in six months to take advantage of the turnaround. Where can you reduce your outlays? Where can you go and renegotiate your fees, your costs, and that sort of thing? You know, I'm not talking about stopping everything, but I'm saying to you, you've got to start looking at the fact that having some extra cash right now is going to be important. OK, it's going to be something that you need and that's going to be something there. Now, if you're the, the, the toilet paper business, you need extra cash because your production levels have just gone through the roof. If you're in the Purell business, your production levels have just gone through the roof. So you need extra cash for that stuff. Now, here's the thing I'm going to say about that. I want you to think about the 10 industries that are booming from this stuff right now. What are the 10 industries that are booming and how can you assist them? How can you target them? How can you help them grow? What can your business do to make sure that you're helping, you know, the Costco's and the Amazon's of this world that are just selling out of stuff? There is so much money being made right now from certain industries and other industries are panicking. Start 
turning your focus to the industries where you can make more money. Start turning your focus to those things. Okay. Slow down if you can, if you can, but keep marketing, keep selling. Do not cut back on marketing and selling. You know, I think it was Henry Ford who said something like, you know, the, the person who cuts back on advertising to save money is the same as the person who slashes their car tires to save on gas. You know, it's, it's something along those lines anyway. But the point of it is a cash is vital when we go through crisis time. So if you've got good cash, if you've saved and you've been doing good during summer and you've cashed up, fantastic. Get ready for the purchasing. Someone asked me this morning, would I be buying into the stock market right now? Uh, absolutely yes and no. Uh, it depends on your risk profile, depends on your risk tolerance. I know some of the biggest guys I know that are on Wall Street that are in massive, massive uh, uh, venture capital funds are buying everything. They are buying everything because the banks are still lending to them massively. So that brings me to point six, okay? Point six is very, very important, okay? Extend your credit now. Go get more credit cards. Go get more credit. They're still lending right now. The banks have not cut back too much. They're not going crazy right now. They're still extending credit. Go get it today. If we look back at 08, 2008, the Ford Motor Car Company survived because they had a $20 billion line of credit or something along those lines. They had it there. They had it set up. If you can get this stuff, even if you have to get personal credit cards where you extend your credit, having that extra credit is not going to be a problem in six months when you don't need it. But if you need it during this period to get through this period, you want to have that extra credit sitting there. You want to do that now. Don't wait until they, if you have to refinance things, refinance it now. Um, you can renegotiate your rates. In fact, you could go back and renegotiate some of those rates and, and start looking at them. If you are sitting there on and, and you don't have credit available right now, go get it as fast as you can. Credit lines, credit cards, you want them now. You want that extension of credit so that you have the ability to be able to do stuff that you need to do during this time. If it goes as bad, and maybe it won't, maybe it'll be perfect, maybe everything will be just fine, maybe all of these shutdowns won't happen in your market, maybe magically you will be the one that doesn't get the, the, the negatives from this stuff. I want you to have the credit anyway so that you are there and you have it and you have that ability to survive. Before banks start shutting down on all their credit, before they start changing their policies, get out there, get it, get the credit as fast as you can. Staffing cuts and changes. You know, it, layoffs may need to happen. There are some of you that are just going to have to do it, okay? That's just going to be the case because some of us, the business is just not going to be there. I have two businesses of ours where we're pretty certain we're going to have to do layoffs, okay? Because we're in an industry where they're just getting shut down. I know here in Las Vegas, I'm looking at the hotels and looking at their occupancy rates that are just plummeting. And you sit there and you say, okay, our restaurant in the casino is probably going to have to do some layoffs. Why? It's just going to have to. There's no two ways about it. That said, some other ways of getting around this, get people on vacation if they need, if they can, okay? Um, if you are going to have to do layoffs though, I'd suggest do them all at one time, all at one time, or just allow attrition. Don't replace at this point in time. If there's an attrition, just allow it and don't replace. But you know, we all know that layoffs kill morale and kill all of those things. So if you can get away with not doing it, I would do that. And there are other ways to do that. You know, if you can have people do less hours, even if they take half days and, and they come in for half days, if they can do it whatever way. I know sometimes that there are going to be some business on here that are just going to have to. And don't wait. Don't, don't do that whole thing. Oh, the Titanic's going down. Let's just wait until we're halfway under before we actually cut back. If you, if you know you're going to have to cut back, do it today. Don't wait. Don't do it. Do that. Now, pay cuts are sometimes an option. If, if this thing gets to where it might be, if two to four weeks from now, we are still in very negative territory economically, then you're going to have to approach some of your people with pay cut options. You're just going to have to. Bonus programs are going to have to disappear. It's just going to be part and parcel of what we're all going to have to do to tighten our belts to get through this next phase, okay? There is going to be light at the end of the tunnel. How far away the end of the tunnel is, I can't predict that. 30, 60, 90 days is my gut feel at this point in time. 
because I don't see us if China over the next two weeks does what I think it's going to do and the and the, they come off if the Israelis and the Chinese that have been working on uh, on, on uh, vaccines and stuff start to show that then fantastic you know there's some reasons to be positive about this stuff we already know what the disease is we already know what it looks like we know we we you know all of these things that are very important to understand that there's some real positives out there. You know, real positives that we have to understand in the marketplace. The fact that we already know this, the fact that there's already clinical trials on, on stuff is very, very important. If you remember back to some uh, te- some viruses like AIDS and things, we didn't even know what it was. We didn't know how to test for it. We've got the tests. You know, 80% of cases in this are mild. I think the overreaction and the over panic is what's leading to more of this than there is. You know, people recover from this. In, in young children, the symptoms are always very mild. Um, you can clean this virus off. Just washing your dang hands, you can clean this stuff off. You know, so that's the thing. Science is working hard on this thing. And you got to tell me these scientists are probably working 20 hours a day, 24 hours a day getting this stuff done. You know, it's I, I got to applaud them on this stuff. They're working super fast and super hard. So uh, much appreciated to all of them and what they're going through. And, you know, Many prayers and much love out to the families who are getting really badly impacted by this stuff. But I'm not here about that. I'm here about the economics. The economics say that when people are in panic, when people are in worry, they go to conservatives. Conservatives, that's they go conservative. Let me just put it that way. Okay. I want you to understand that. I am. I, I, I'm. I want you to know from me to you. I'm not panicked about the virus. I'm not panicked about that. I'm more concerned with the fact that if we go into shutdown or lockdown or these sorts of things, what's going to happen economically to you, me, all of our businesses? I have nine companies that I'm considering this stuff in. Every day I'm sitting there thinking, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this stuff? I'm putting in more thought hours now than I have been for months. You know, you all know that I love telling you that I work Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm still not working a lot of hours, but I'm thinking 24 hours a day, every business. I'm in there thinking about what are we going to do? How are we going to do this stuff? So I want you thinking every day, all day. Step eight, there is a very, very good chance that you and your people are going to want to work from home for a little while over this period of time. There's a very good chance that your business is going to need to work from home, okay? Or a percentage, a skeleton staff at the office or a skeleton staff in the store and as many other people as possible work from home. So that that's going to happen. You're seeing it like here in the United States, I'm seeing two areas already that are in quarantine zone. I'm seeing more areas. You know, the San Jose Sharks are playing hockey games with no crowd. We're seeing that in other countries around the world. So how do you plan to work from home? Number one, look at your technology needs, okay? Will you need more, uh, it could go to webinar or could uh, Zoom or is it Skype? What are you going to need for communication? What are you going to need for sending notes back and forth? How are you going to do your accounting? How are you going to do all of these things? What technology is going to be needed for you to work from home and for all your people to work from home? How will you do meetings and reporting? What's going to happen with that? Start thinking this stuff through. If it comes down the pipe, I don't want you to be surprised by it. I want you to have a plan for it. Okay, if we're going to do meetings, here's how we're going to do them. This is what we're going to do. How do we report? We send it through in this methodology. We do this stuff. Do we need extra computers? Do we need extra uh, Wi-Fi, do we need extra uh, internet capabilities? What are we going to need for this stuff? How are we going to handle customer service if we work from home? How are we going to get money into the bank? What are we going to do with the mail? What are we going to do with postage, with sending, with deliveries? How are we going to communicate with our customers, with our staff? What are these things that are going to happen for everybody? Okay, We've got to make certain that that's the stuff we're working on time and time again. So everything can you make sure that that is what's been going? You know. These are some of the things that we've got to look at. You know, every single one of us has to keep looking at what we're doing and how we're doing it. But the plan to work from home, it might only be a week or two, but it might be months. Okay, so you've got to have the plan in play if it gets called. Now, some of you are going to want to just offer this to your staff right now. Some of you are going to want to offer to your staff, hey, I'm I'm making an offer to you to work from home for the next little period of time. Listen, the world's moving this way anyway. So what are you going to do and how are you going to do it? If you need to go virtual, what's that going to look like? I want you thinking that through. I don't want it surprising you if it does come and kick kick into gear. Okay. Step nine. Uh, I just saw it today. First thing this morning, 
massive pharmacy chain here in the US. They're going to deliver for free straight up now because they don't want people coming into their stores. If you're sick, they want to have the the they want the the delivery going to you. They don't want to do it. So you need to be thinking about delivery or phone or online of your product or service. How do you deliver this thing virtually? How do you send it to someone? If you're in a restaurant, you need to be thinking about how do we get delivery to people? How do we do more delivery of our food or service rather than just doing that? What is that going to look like? What packaging? What products do we need? How do we need to change up our staff in order to do that? What is there that we need to be looking for? If people aren't coming to you, how are you going to get business done? If people aren't coming around, what are you going to do to make sure that everything works for you? How are you going to keep everything moving? Again, this may or may not happen, but I want you to be at least thinking about it. See, if we wait and we don't think this stuff through, we get caught. And when you get caught is when the problem happens, when you're reactive about this stuff and you don't have packaging thought through and you don't have a delivery system thought through. You don't have online technology in order to be able to work with your customers day in and day out. You know, if you're an accountant, people that used to come and meet with you, they're probably not going to want to do that for the next month or two. They're probably want to going to do Zoom calls. They're probably going to want to do all of their accounting over the phone or over the, the internet. So you need to start thinking about that stuff. Now, if you're in a business that must do things, that if you're in the hairdressing business and people do come to you, then you're going to need to shift and change the way you do things. You're going to need to look at masks. You're going to need to look at the washing and the cleaning and all of those sorts of things and how you're doing it and communicate that to your customer base. Maybe in the hairdressing, you're going to be going to people's houses rather than them coming to your store. Maybe that's the shift that's going to happen for you. Who knows? But I want you to be thinking it through. I, again, I'm not the panic worry merchant, but I am the planner. I don't want panic. I want planning. And that's really what we're here to think about today. Get with your business coach and plan this stuff through. Work it through. And yes, sometimes you're going to need to get with them virtually. There's no two ways about that. That's probably going to be a part of it. Number 10. And again, I'm going to get to questions in a little while, gang. So if you've got any questions, make sure you've typed them in to, to the uh, to question box. Step 10, marketing and selling. Listen, I can't give you enough thoughts about this then in times of economic crisis marketing should be the last thing you stop doing marketing should be the first thing on your agenda to keep going keep getting business how are we going to keep getting business but your marketing is going to have to change you can't just think that your old marketing is going to work in this market anymore people are thinking about different things people are thinking about different ways people are in panic mode people are in worry people are in so you've got to be thinking about your marketing from that perspective. I know with our cleaning company, we've already changed our marketing up to be more about full disinfections of business. How are you getting it? Do you need to have it done daily now rather than weekly? You know, a lot of our customers are having to shift to daily cleaning rather than weekly cleaning. They, we, you know, we've, ca we've called them all and said, listen, you have customers coming into your store. Yes, great. Your cleaning is going to need to go to daily or at least every other day. We're going to upgrade the level of chemicals we're working with you. So our marketing is shifting for all of our new customer base. That's what we're looking for. You've got to keep doing it. Now, can you negotiate better rates on your marketing at this point in time? Absolutely. Fundamentally, you can get better rates on your marketing at this point in time. That's what you should be looking to be, to be doing. Will your offers and rates have to shift for you? Yes, probably. You're probably going to have to create new offers, new way, new things for people to buy, new strategies for people to, to do things with you. You are probably going to have to shift a bit about what it is you're doing to make certain that the marketplace is ready for what you're offering out there. People are thinking differently. Measure your five ways. If you don't know my five ways formula, jump on YouTube, type in Brad Sugar's five ways and watch my uh, five ways video. But you've got to know your numbers, how many leads, what's your conversion rate. In times of crisis, knowing your numbers is more important than any other time. And finally, if you can get cash up front today, get cash up front. You know, if that's what you if you can get it, definitely go get that sort of thing. It's not the sort of thing where we're sitting there going, oh yeah, let's just let them give them longer credit terms. No, we probably don't want longer credit terms in this market. We probably want to be focusing more on the cash up front from what we're doing. I see a lot of good questions coming in. Keep typing them in, gang. We'll get to them in just a little while. 
Uh, step 11. Uh, if I can just jump on the webcam just for a second on step 11. In this, in this time frame, it's more important. You've probably heard me teach before that repeat business equals profit. Profit comes from keeping your existing customers, okay? In this time, there is no more important time than to keep your, it's, it is the most vital thing you can do is keep your existing customer base. Keep working with your existing customer base. Work what you need to do. Let's go into a few points around that to make sure that you're doing it, okay? If I, if I go very sim simple, okay? We need to be in communication with our existing customers and talking with them and offering them deals that is just for them to get them back in. Make sure. Now, if you've not kept a database of your existing customers, dang, it's that, that's a killer for me. But I, I, I want you to, if you have to start now, then start now. But we cannot, and I mean cannot, ignore our existing customers. We have to be touching them, reaching out to them. Not touching because you're not allowed to touch during coronavirus. Um, but we need to be asking them to buy more at all costs, be working with them. Communication, um, offers, deals for them. Make sure they know that you feel that, that, that you feel they're important. Make sure they know they are important to you. Make certain that your existing customers feel loved. Make sure that your existing customers feel valued. That's the thing. You've got to be going back to them right now. So sit down. All of these 11 steps, I want you to sit down today when you finish this and make a plan for your business. What are we going to do in each thing? How am I going to stay positive as point two? How am I going to do all this stuff? You know, these are some of the things you're going to be looking at. Um, of my top 11 things you need to do, step 12. Yes, you heard it right. Step 12 of 11. Over deliver right now. Over deliver on customer service. Don't hold back on customer service right now. Do more than you are expected to do. Go above and beyond. Common sense and compassion will be the winner in this thing. Common sense and compassion are very important. Um, you know, use a big bunch of common sense, all right? C clean your place, disinfect every dang thing. Don't touch people, don't handshake. If you have to, elbow bump, you know, sanitizer everywhere. Do these things, but be nice. Take a chill pill, people. Okay. And if, uh, before I get to questions, if my final point is stop buying too much toilet paper. You know, if you're taking all the cleaning products, you forget that everybody needs to, to do this sort of thing. You know, I, I want to make sure I keep educating everybody. I want to make sure that I get everybody to keep learning. So there's, um, in fact, Jared, can you, uh, I just want to ask, all right, gang, I'd like to do something for you that I wouldn't normally, okay, how can I do this? Jared, are you there, buddy? Yeah, I'm here, Brad. Okay. Um, you know, all right. In how many days, like 20 or 21 days, you've got the launch for my 30X business program, the 30 minutes a day for 30 days education thing? 21. 21 days. Is there a possibility I could get that to these people now? Yeah, let me, um, let me find the link. Let me see what it's I can so, find for you. So it, it's, it is capable of people getting it now? Yes. Yeah. Let me um, let me find it and I'll uh, incorporate it into the chat. Okay. All right. Here, here's what I do. Before I get to questions, gang. Thanks, Jared. Before I get to questions, here's what I want to do. Uh, I've been working for the last 12 months on this program, 30X, 30 minutes a day for 30 days with me to educate you. We were going to launch it in 21 days with a ridiculous $99 special. All right. Uh, let me see if Jared can get you a link and I'll get you in on that now so you can start working on your education today. All right, let me get the questions. Let me pull up all the questions in here. If you've got a question, type it in because there's so much more. I've been studying this thing like crazy the last 48 hours and making sure. Um, Aruba, oh dang, In the it, okay. So we're in the tourism business. Uh, floor safety, I do floor enhancement treatment. How do I survive this crisis? Sharona, listen, the, the thing that I'm going to say to you is this. The tourism business is going to get hit and going to get hit hard. Your job right now is to find a way to assist them to not get hit as hard. Your job is to find a way to help them. If you can find the way to help them, then you will be able to get this stuff. You, you must find a way. Now, the flip side of that is 
What businesses are doing better because of this in your marketplace? Yes, I know tourism is the biggest business in Aruba, but what businesses are going to do better and what do they need for their floor treatments? If you take a look at the supermarkets, the ones that are selling out of stuff, where do you need to go? What do you need to do? Okay. Now, uh, next question, is sentiment going to shift? Listen, sentiment's going to take a little while, and I believe it's going to be that the sentiment is not going to shift until we see governments taking massive action, until we see the Italian government's taking massive action. I think they're in their fourth round of massive action right now. But that's that's going to be something that you need to understand. Um, yeah, some clients are already hit by the panic. Yes, that is 100%. You know, there is going to be panic in the streets. And that's what I'm saying. We've got to plan for that panic right now. It is happening. We don't, don't try and put your head in the sand and say it's not happening. If this webinar is anything, it should be a wake-up call to say, wake up, know that this stuff is happening. Know that it is coming. It, it is going to be there. And I want you to be ready for it, okay? Don't panic get planning okay that's what i'm look um do, 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 do. refunds on the company rather than good and service based company okay so people are going to be coming to you for refunds okay the number one thing oh there it is jared's just sent the link for anybody if uh, there's a link in the chat box if you click that link you can get uh, that program only for people on this webinar you're going to get it for 99 bucks at this stage it's not being released to anybody for another 21 days so uh, just because of this pandemic i'm going to throw it to you guys today if you want it this is not a big push or a sell or anything i just said if if, if i just thought if you could get your education going faster get it grab it do it what you need to do okay now make sure that you're learning that stuff so flip it over for a second okay uh, um, refunds yes you should be looking to get refunds if you can if you've got stuff that you want to get a refund on I, I would definitely be looking for that however postpone things be in front of it if you've got someone coming to you do a postponement rather than a refund do a, a, a postpone put a policy in place that you'll postpone anything get ahead of it. Kind of like what United Airlines did. They put the policy out, we'll postpone and everything. And it stopped a lot of cancellations for them. It allowed people to move their flights to later in the year to do things. You, you're going to get that stuff. Okay. Um, uh, people asking about the recording. Yeah. You'll get an email later today with the recording in that. Okay. Do -do -do -do. I mean, the travel agency, we're very worried. Yes, Teresa, the travel agencies are going to be very worried. However, what you got to do is start to flip. See what Las Vegas is doing now, I'm seeing this already. They're starting to do things, deals for locals. They're starting to do things, deals for people within the United States. They know people that had trips to China are canceling, so they're trying to get them to come and do smaller trips, do something, do that, that style of thing. Make sure you're focused on what you can do, not what you can't do, okay? So make sure you're doing that. Uh, the slides uh, will be being shared with the recording of the entire thing for the four or five of you that have asked that. Okay, next round of questions. Do -do -do -do. Okay, we're in the care home business. See, in the care home business, again, cleaning, communication, vital of what you're going to do. You know, I, I can't help but sit down and say, we've got to make sure. If I had three care homes right now, listen, I would be marketing because people are going to still need them. There's going to be more people needing care homes and these sorts of things. Anyone in any healthcare business right now should be doing amazingly well. You shouldn't be turning to the panic. You should be in the, dang, we're going to do very well out of this. That's You, you should be with that focus or that mentality. Please make sure you don't turn to the negative. Don't turn into that positive. Architectural residential space, it's easy to operate remotely in the interior space, see it differently attached to residential space. Maps that worked in the last GFC. Listen, the last GFC, what I saw happening, and, and again, in, the GFC was different. We didn't have to go and work from home. We didn't have to do this remote viral thing in the GFC. And, and so that's where it's gonna be different. We don't actually, I don't believe we're gonna have as long a downturn. I don't believe we're gonna have as big a downturn. Um, so you've got to be looking at the HVAC business. Oh my God, if you're in the HVAC business, you should be booming right now. Your marketing should be 100% focused on cleaning for people. 
We're going to get in and do a full disinfect of your uh, of your heating and ventilation and air system. You need a full disinfect now. Let us come and disinfect. Let us come and do the full thing. Dang, you should be booming right now. Take a look at what you can do, not what you can't do. Um, we're in the dermatology physician recruitment firm. Our clients are still hiring because there's a lack of candidates. However, we have to move to all Skype and FaceTime interviews, the personal interviews which have been delayed, delay our actual revenue. Listen, don't do personal interviews. Tell people we're not doing that now. It's gone. It is. It's just gone. The old way of doing it has to stop from some of this stuff. You just have to stop doing it. You can't do that anymore. This is what I'm saying. The world has shifted. It's stopped. It's changed. Some of those old methodologies of doing business is done. You just have to finish and you just have to say, I'm, I'm done with this sort of stuff. It's, we, we just can't do this, okay? We've got to make certain. Uh, will I post? Yeah, I'll post the recording this up on my social media as well. Yeah, thanks for that question. That's a good idea. I'll make sure I get the recording up. Um, about getting cash up front. Does that include real estate rental? Um, got an offer from a prospect who wants to rent my property for six years and they paid up front in cash for six years rental. Rental is usually two to three years from where I come from. Listen, I, if someone wants to pay cash up front right now, I'm taking a cash up front discount. Absolutely. I'd like to have cash right now. That's a, that's a definite thing. Uh, cash up front discount is not a, it's, a, it's not a bad thing to be doing right now. Now, what percentage cash discount? You need to work that out based on your own business. Um, is it a good time to buy a business or change business model? Uh, I believe in about two to three months will be a great time to start buying out your competitors. In two to three months, you'll be looking at buying your competitors based on the fact that they have uh, a lot of customers that you want to take over. So remember this, in, in the GFC of 2008, 30 to 40 percent of businesses disappeared. That meant all of their customers had to buy from someone else. So be, be wary of this fact. All of the customers are going to buy from someone else. OK. Um, let me jump to the, the camera here rather than all this stuff. So in the middle of rebranding and plan to launch our new brand and service program in May, there's a lot of costs that's going with that at the moment. Should we cut back? Yes, I would hold off on that. That's exactly what I meant about hold off on stuff you didn't need to do. It, you might only hold off for two weeks. It might be a two-week thing that you hold back on and just say, okay, let's just watch this for two weeks. You know, um, we just hired six new salespeople. They've been with us 10 days. Do we let them go? Ah. Uh, if they're paying for themselves, Andy, I would keep them on board. But, you know, you've got it because you've got to keep marketing and sales happening. I know we just had a couple of new salespeople in one of our company. We're definitely not letting them go. We've got to keep selling. We've got to keep focused on that. You don't get through this stuff by you don't cut costs to get through a crisis. That's not the only way. You've got to keep an eye on costs. You've got to keep an eye on it and be respectful of it. But definitely not. Um, that's that's definitely not the way we would be looking at Office cleaner, I've already talked about that one. Make sure that those cleaning, the HVAC, there's a few questions on that. That's You've got to be able to, to, to do that sort of stuff. Um, there's still more questions piling in. How long have I got? I got about another eight minutes. Yes, um, those who think, the I will put the uh, link for the $99 course in the email as well. Jared, can you make sure that in the email or the, the follow-up thing from GoTo that everyone has the link to that as well, okay? Um, make sure you get that. The chat box is in the thing. Um, if you don't have the link, it's there should be a chat box that everyone was sent. It should be right there. If you're on your phone, you probably have to look at it on the bottom of your phone. Um, don't panic, get planning. Yes, thank you. Uh, refrigeration air conditioning company. Again, clean, clean, clean. Everything should be about cleaning if you've got it right now. If you're in any of those businesses, 100%. I'm seeing ServPro out there crushing it right now. Where can you do cleaning? Uh, CFL biz in Ireland trying to help staff take back the power mentality from the virus after dealing with six weeks of it externally and now it's internal as well and spreads here. Tips for staff motivation. Listen, go back to that thing about let them work from home. Go back to that stuff. Communicate every day with them. Have one of them communicate positivity. Put one person every day in charge of being the, the, the cheerleader for the day. Have every person tell good stories. Share good stories. You know, my kids just literally only like an hour before we got on this, um, my kids sent me a thing about the you know 10 good reasons or 10 things why we should be uh, happy about this virus. So keep looking for that. Um, client in the in-home care business. All clients are compromised. Caregivers give children themselves. So schools, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Listen, there is going to be massive wearing of gloves and stuff like that. They're going to have to be there. Um, in Brazil, my client's a gym and she's planning on expansion. Do you think we should postpone the investment? 
I would for 20 to 30 days. It's not 20, 30, 40 days is not going to hurt to postpone that sort of thing. It's really not. Uh, buy real estate now. Yes, people are still going to need to live in homes. They're still going to need it. You know, but make sure you're buying in areas where people have jobs. If there's an Amazon center or a, or a Costco near there, dang, there's going to be people. Hospitals. Oh, my God. Hospitals are going to be busy as heck. They're going to be hiring, recruiting, wanting more people. Um, private healthcare business, all of those sorts of things. Cafe in a tourist hotspot. I've not taken extra staff as usual. I'm confident I'm lean staff wise. I would stay lean, Ali. Definitely I would stay lean um, at least for a couple of weeks. Uh, where are we? How to help English centers persuade parents and students to switch to learning online? How to ask parents to buy more during this period? Listen, I, I, I don't think you have to convince them to go online. When we see Harvard kicking all of their students out and making all of their students going home, everyone is doing that stuff. Um, Diego, I know you're in a hotel. I know it's very worrying, buddy, but you got to communicate what you've done. You got to communicate your clean. You got to communicate everything that you're doing so that you can make sure of that. But definitely be looking at cutbacks. Definitely be looking at it. Okay, there's no two ways about it. You've you've got to be understanding of this that it's not going to get better in a day. It's going to take time. Um, that's the thing. Uh, insurance consulting company, you focus on home insurance. What's another product or service that would be offered? That's what you, Jay, you got to sit down and brainstorm that with your team. Door to door sales is definitely going to be a thing that's going to come back. We're going to see more, but you know, I, everywhere's going to have to move to this stuff. Uh, what else do we got here in the questions? Let me go down. Ten industries that are making money in this time. Dang! Sit down and brainstorm with your team because they got to be close to what you're doing. It can't be ten industries that are way away from what you already do. They need to be ten industries. Um, um, do you, I think businesses need coaches more now than ever? Yes. Oh my God! It, I, it was. It's crazy that I see people think, "Oh, it, it, it's a crisis. I'll get rid of my coach." Do you see a team, a football team or a basketball team, when they're in crisis, get rid of a coach? No, that's when they need their coach the most. You know, that's that's something that's very much there. So definitely, um, some of you ask, can you share the link for the ninety-nine dollar dollar to your clients and to your friends? Um, sure, sure, you can do that. Just just don't don't shout it on social media. You can share it to your friends by email, but don't put it on social media for me, okay? Please don't do that because we still got twenty-one days before it's supposed to go to the public. All right? Um, yeah. Definitely. Buy to let houses, find to buy it right now. Infrastructure problems, do you see from countries like India and China? They all have to work from home. Is it possible? No. No, some of these countries where work from home, they just shut down. It's not they don't work from home. That's why I'm saying we need to be planned on how we can sustain our business with work from home. You know, you see in China that a lot of them, they didn't have the, the ongoing facilities to be able to do that. Listen, as I finish up here today, I want to tell you this. This is about plan, not panic. 2020 is different. It's different. It just is. The economy's different. The market's different. The way the world is, is different now. It really is. I want you to be thinking about it from that perspective. Okay. So in finishing up what we're doing here today and finishing it up, get with your action coach and make your 90 day plan. Jump on that thing. Do, do my next 30 days. 30 X is 30 minutes with me a day for 30 days to learn my 30 years business knowledge. Get all of the fundamentals. Listen, if you need half an hour of me a day to keep your focus and keep you uh, booming and keep your brain up and keep your, uh, and just to stay positive, then do that. Before you get off this webinar or as soon as you hang up, I want what's five things you need to do today. Make a list of them. What are the five things you need to do today? Tonight, sit down and go through all the 11 areas. We've done question and answer time. Follow up. Listen, I'm going to send you uh, a link to rewatch this video. Uh, I'm going to, I'll get Jared and the team to post it on social media so you can share it with friends or family that need it. Um, jump on the thing to get the $99 thing. I, um, Jared, I, I, I believe we throw in a copy of my latest book too with that. I, I, I'm not sure, buddy. I, it's, it, it's not for 21 days, so I don't really know what we're doing with that. You there, Jared? Yeah, no, uh, it does come with the book. Okay, so just listen, just jump on it, get it, get the knowledge growing. But listen, plan, don't panic. Go through these 11 points again, plan it, don't panic, get learning, get growing. I really hope this helped you get more of a focus as to what you need to do. Focus on what you can do, not what you can't. I'm Brad Sugars. Um, you know, normally I've, 
if, if you're not following me on all the social medias, make sure you do that because I'm going to keep doing drive times. I'm going to keep doing knowledge stuff. I may even do another webinar in a week or two just to keep the knowledge base going, all right? Take care. Bye for now. Stay healthy, stay safe, and keep your business going. We need to survive this thing. If we can thrive, that's fantastic. But at the very least, we need to survive it. Take care, gang. Bye for now.